Well, welcome to Edge. Edge is a product that was released to Adobe Labs, labs labs.adobe.com, earlier this month. And it is an animation tool for people that are working in the HTML web space. It uses uh, HTML5, sort of. Uh, The doc type is HTML5, but uh, most of the grunt work and heavy lifting is done through CSS3 and JavaScript. And in this tutorial, what I want to do is sort of walk you through the various bits and pieces of the interface. And then in subsequent uh, tutorials later on, uh, what I will do is show you exactly how to use the app for some pretty interesting stuff. So let's get started. When the application opens, you'll see that there are a number of panels, and there's this big white area here. This is called the stage. And the stage is where the action happens. So if you're a flash guy or any sort of uh, video guy or anybody that does animation, you're quite familiar with the stage. If it happens in this white area, the user sees it, and if it happens outside of it, the user doesn't see it. It's that simple. The Properties panel right here displays the properties of all the items and objects that you've selected on the uh, stage. And the really cool thing about it is that you can actually name things and make changes right here to the stage. So if you want to call the stage, you know, well, we'll call it the stage. You'll notice that the name takes here. And... You can change the width of the stage by scrubbing across these numbers. Okay, you can change the height of the stage by scrubbing across the numbers. The other thing you can do is just double click them and input the values. Okay, so I'm going to make this 800 by 600. And you can even change the color of the stage by choosing a color from the color picker. So those are, that's the properties panel. In many respects, think of it, if you're a Flash user especially, uh, or even a uh, Fireworks user, as the properties panel. Up at the top, above the properties panel, are very rudimentary tools. There's a selection tool, a rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle tool, which allows you to create rounded corners, and, of course, a text tool. Over here is the elements panel. The elements panel is not to be thought of as a library. Uh, basically, what it is is it's essentially a listing of the elements of the uh, web page. And the elements, these basically are the divs that are created as you get things moving around. And they will appear in order here. And when I say in order, that means in order in which they are added. And uh, that can be a bit problematic when you're first getting used to uh, working with Edge, but I'll show you how to switch things up a bit. Uh, as we get deeper into the exercises. The workspace here, there's only really one workspace, the uh, default, but you can set your own. Now down here is the timeline, and you'll notice first off that the timeline is bro- is measured in time. It is not measured in frames. Also, this uh, 0.01 is actually the one second mark, so you're looking at hundredths of a second here. These uh, two white diamonds that you see, they're keyframes. They're the, they're the properties that start the animation. This is the rewind button. This is the play button. This is the fast forward button. This will zip you over to the side. And this is the time code. Now, right now, in this iteration of the app, the time code is not able to be scrubbed or used. So I would suggest that uh, if you're looking to get this changed, go to the uh, forums and just ask if the time, uh, the time code could be made a little bit more useful. These three buttons over here uh, are will affect how the timeline works. This first one is auto keyframe properties. As soon as something hits the stage, a keyframe is kicked out. If you don't want the keyframes, you can uh, add them yourself just by simply deselecting it. This uh, button here, the Generate Smooth Transitions button, basically allows you to have transitions smoothly occur like a fade or a bounce or something like that. And if you deselect it, what happens is it just basically pops. This button here, which kind of looks like a martini glass, is actually show only animated elements. So if you have a div that's got a lot of elements in it or a uh, an animation that has a lot of elements in it, and they don't move, you can actually select this, and the ones that aren't affected by any sort of keyframing will basically disappear. 
Right here is the playhead, so you can scrub the playhead to particular times. Right here, I've gone to the two second mark. And you can, you know, get animations to happen at that point. Now there's this little gray thing right here. And it's called the mark. This is uh, unique to Edge. And it's a pretty interesting little tool. Now the mark allows you to establish a span or a duration for an animation. And to activate the mark, what you do is you just put the cursor over the mark. You see the little pointer finger there. And just press Command or Control K. You see it lights up. Now what you've just done there is you've dropped a mark. So this is the starting point of the animation. And you can now pull out a duration. And if you're familiar with After Effects, it kind of looks like one of them. And there's the end point of the animation. The mark works in conjunction with the time with the playback head, and that's a really good way of thinking about it. Okay, let's uh, get rid of that. I'm just going to undo that. Command Z. And we'll just put the mark back here. Okay. The tools are fairly simple, or fairly basic, depending on who you talk to. And if I turn off keyframes, you can see that as soon as I draw it, the properties light up. And you can see that all objects have specific properties. Location, size, you've got colors, uh, fill, stroke. You can even have a border style. You can see solid dash. These are the CSS styles, of course. What sort of transform you'd like to have happen on the X and the Y axis, rotation, skew, scale. And this down here is for rounding off of rectangles. So if I scrub across here, you can see that the corner points come in, the solid corner diamonds come in, and the rectangle ro uh, essentially rounds off. To open and close items on the timeline, you basically just use the little twirly here. That's what these things are called, twirlies. And you can even zoom the timeline for more fine-grained control, which is down here, as you can see. So there you go. There's uh, your introduction to the application. In the next exercise, we'll uh, start looking at moving things around and using the mark and keyframes to get things moving. I'll see you there.